We now move to the Unified Commissioners at Large from the Southern District. And uh, Tom Burroughs and J.D. Rios are the candidates. You have opening remarks for two minutes. Well, good evening. My name is J.D. Rios, and I'm the candidate for the Commissioner at Large, District 2. I welcome you to your Kansas City, Kansas Community College. I feel very uh, privileged uh, to have this opportunity to seek office for the unified government. It was 20 years ago when I was a member of the Citizens for Consolidation. And frankly, I am wanting to run now to ensure the fulfillment of a promise. And I believe there is ample opportunity for this promise of prosperity across our county. Consolidation was but a step in the right direction. There are many other steps that need to be followed. I would welcome the opportunity to be a part of those steps to further the economic development of our county. Thank you. Tom Burroughs. Well, thank you. Thanks everyone for coming out this evening. I too am quite, quite privileged and honored to have the opportunity to to put myself forward as a candidate for the commissioner at large district two. Now you may ask why would a sitting state legislator choose to want to run for local office? Well, I'll, I'll answer that question. I believe as a former house democratic leader in the great state of Kansas, I recognize the challenges local leaders and local governments have faced under this administration. I also offer my experiences and success as a leader to assist in building a brighter Wyandotte County at every local level possible. Serving as former Democratic leader in the state of Kansas has allowed me to build coalitions, work in a bipartisan manner, listen to multiple concerns and issues across all facets of our state and as well as communities. There is not one organization I believe I have not had the privilege of meeting and working with and collaborating with in the 21 years I've served in the Kansas legislature. I believe those experiences will provide me the necessary tools to be a great partner with our local leaders and to do what we can to make Wyandotte County a brighter, better community as we move forward collectively. I stand ready to do my part. I stand ready to partner with our local leaders. Okay, thank you. We'll open with Dave Reno from Downtown Shareholders to ask questions and we will start with Tom Burroughs. Thank you. This question uh, is for both of you. You're in the unique position of representing the whole of Wyandotte County and not just a particular district. So what's the most pressing issue that faces Wyandotte County specifically? We'll start with Tom Burroughs. Well, thank you. Having the opportunity to live in this community my entire life, I can tell you that the revenue for this community, the property taxes, uh, have been a number one issue among our community for years that I've lived here. As a homeowner in this community, I too feel the burden on a middle class family and on those who on limited income as to the cost of being a homeowner in this, in this community. What I would clearly indicate is that as a community, we should look at how we can lower those taxes on our property. And I believe it's through assessment and valuation. We need to get them more in line. When, when you build your home for $100,000 and a business builds its business for $2 million, the assessment on your home is $100,000. But yet the assessment on a business is something different. That is borne by the property owner of the home. When we do not have the revenue that is equal and fair across the board, we need to find a way to bring our evaluations and our assessments more in line with one another. I believe then and only then will you be able to reinvest in your communities and your neighborhoods to make 
make them whole and investment in the infrastructure that we so sorely need across our community. J.D. Rios. Well, on my door-to-door -door, uh, visits with our, our citizens, I have to concur that the concern, number one, is taxes. Uh, how do we go about uh, providing tax relief? Uh, I am suggesting that uh, we should deal with the pilot first. Um, it isn't, it stands for in lieu of taxes, but it is an additional tax. It isn't in lieu of taxes. It is a tax. And all citizens, whether they are property owners or renters, pay the tax. So immediate relief for all citizens would be with the pilot. Uh, so uh, I would look to that first, and I would, uh, I would uh, say that there should be a tiered approach to that. While we would lower it for individuals, those businesses that actually do not, that do not pay property taxes should still pay the pilot. Then we would truly have something that is in lieu of taxes. Uh, so I would keep the percentage the same for those who do not pay uh, property taxes, but for those individual citizens who need to have additional resources uh, for needed services for their families, I would suggest that we address that pilot. Now we move to Andrew Galicias from the Central Avenue Betterment Association with his question. Thank you. Uh, talking about strategy, as uh, Dave says, you will, or your A, will be able to touch all of the county. To dismantle something, you have to, to know what that something is and how it works. Please explain how you would work to dismantle the local machinery of oppression and control. We'll start with JD. It's one of the reasons that I'm running. The Hispanic population is 28% of the county, and there isn't Hispanic representation. Without a voice, then you don't get heard. Or you don't get heard clearly. I believe that it is important to not only celebrate our diversity, but to ensure that our government is representative of that diversity. So that is one. The other is that it isn't just sufficient to have someone who looks like, but you have to have someone who is a strong community advocate. I have been associated with the community my entire adult life, from the NAACP, El Centro, Wyandotte Center, the United Way, I have been involved in this community. I understand the needs of the citizens. I have attempted to assist in addressing those needs on those various boards. I have exercised leadership by having been voted chairman, vice chairman of these uh, groups. And I think that that is the way you go about combating Oppression is being part of the solution. Tom Burrow. Well, thank you. I, I maybe take a little bit different tone when it comes to oppression <coughs> and control. It, it, it can magnify itself over just about anything we do in our community. I see oppression as very offensive. I believe it holds people back, and the old saying is it, it holds people down. But you know, Wyandotte County has been oppressed for a long time as a community by a high tax burden by a mass exodus of some of our best and brightest, 
by a school system that's been challenged by underfunding from the state, by a public safety image, and sometimes we are our own worst enemy when it comes to oppressing what I call the reputation of our community. Now you wanna talk about control. We can control the destiny of our community by electing strong leaders, leaders that have a track record of success, leaders that are willing to put aside their personal agendas and work collectively and collaboratively with all members of our community. No hidden agendas, a transparent state, uh, state of the art forecast of what our community should look like, a vision. So we move the oppression from a community that has been targeted as such and labeled as such in the past, and we change it by becoming the phoenix on the plains with the development that we've had, by encouraging the very youth of our community to have hope and be excited about staying home in our community. Collectively, that's how we control the very destiny of not only the children and members of our community, but the reputation of our community in this state and metropolitan area. Okay, now we'll move to Valerie Musset with the Chamber of Commerce and the Fairfax Association and her question. And Thank we'll you. start with Tom Burroughs. Thank you. One of the um, legislative agenda items for the Kansas City, Kansas Chamber of Commerce um, has to do with local sourcing. Um, something we're really looking more towards for the um, local government to help us with this initiative. What is local sourcing to you and how can it, how can you get that through to work in our community? Well, I think that's a two-phase question. Local sourcing means to me is utilizing those resources and those businesses and those partners within a community to build your network, to supply, to be your suppliers, your, and at the same time be your consumers of the various industries across our community. If you, if you put out a bid process and you put a percentage on it, let's say hypothetically 5% bid higher or lower, but it has to be from a local source to hit within that criteria, then I think there's merit in putting forth a local source. We shouldn't have to have legislation. We should have a free market that allows for businesses to work with partners. And if, if the cost is beneficial to our local community and a com local community vendor should be given priority, these are our businesses. This turns the dollar over two or three to six times within our community. We stabilize and build our own community economy by doing just that. But in the legislature, it takes three to five years to get a bill passed. And we have talked about this issue in the past. Some people find it to be a closed discussion. Other people find it to be uh, against what we consider the open market. And I'm one of those that believes that uh, I do business in my community as much as I possibly can because I believe in growing my local economy and supporting my local vendors. But I stand ready to uh, continue to have the discussions with the chamber. I've already had two of those with representatives from the chamber to see how we can move forward and make this issue possible for Wyandotte County. J.D. Reels. Local sourcing is particularly important to small business. Uh, it, uh, it's something that uh, I believe if we, as a unified government and supporting the chamber and other organizations and marketing what our uh, local businesses uh, offer, uh, I think that that would go a long way. Uh, we don't often know about our local uh, our businesses, the, the mom and pop stores, uh, the, uh, the person that uh, has their family as their employees. Uh, uh, you know, those, uh, those businesses can, can uh, be very important to the community and we need to advertise to let people know that local flavor. Uh, so I, I think that that uh, is important. I also think economies of scale are important. That we're the unified government, the school districts, the college, and that if they would uh, join uh, forces in, uh, in their bidding process of trying to uh, solicit uh, uh, more bids locally, uh, and because of the economy of scale, this, this could uh, be beneficial. 
Uh, but again, this has to be discussed. There has to be a lot more details uh, worked out uh, for this to be successful. But I think that those are worthwhile discussions to be had. Next, we'll move to Mary Rupert of the Wyandotte Daily Online, and she will ask questions starting with J.D. Reels. Thank you. If elected, would you be in favor of cuts to public safety departments in the unified government? Well, I understand the question. I guess I'm a little <laughs> taken aback by it. Uh, we have a shortage in our public safety Currently, uh, the sheriff just spoke about the openings that he had within <coughs> his department. The police have openings. The fire department have openings. Uh, and I, I think that we need to get to the capacity uh, of uh, <laughs> our departments uh, to ensure public safety. That's actually, I think, one of the number one responsibilities of local government is, uh, is, uh, is public safety. And so I, at this juncture, would have to say that I am not in favor. Actually, I have ideas of how to better recruit to fill the positions that are lacking within our public safety sector. Okay. Tom Burroughs. I'll go on record and say absolutely not. I believe our law enforcement community, our public safety officers, as well as our fire department, EMTs, those that respond to we, the public in need, deserve our utmost respect and cooperation and support in anything and everything that they do. I've lived in this community my entire life, and I can, I've heard a number of times gone door to door, the public safety is an issue in Wyandotte County. I can share with you that it's not, as, uh, it's not the county that it was 20 years ago, and that is because of the initiative been taken by a number of police chiefs in this community, chiefs that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, and for the officers themselves some who have paid the ultimate price unselfishly to defend this community. I truly believe as a city of the first class, we deserve to have a law enforcement on the street that is well equipped, well funded, and well supported. I'm the candidate that will do that. Next, we'll have questions from Elnora Jefferson with the Historic Midtown Association, and we'll start with Tom Burroughs. Okay, thank you, good evening. Good evening. In your campaign, your vision is somewhat like the mayor CEO, though you do not have that power. <laughs> and I'm interested in your, your notebook of notes that you took as you're campaigning around the county. And so to answer this question, I'd like for you to envision a county in four quadrants. And then on those four quadrants, I'd like for you to share with us what you've seen as your, your recommendation for policies for each of those four quadrants? That's a pretty in-depth vision. Well, first and foremost, from my experiences in the legislature, I know that I, as a commissioner at large, and even that as a legislature, can't do anything by myself. I have to be able to collaborate and get others to understand what needs to be done and work in a collaborative manner to put forth whatever vision it may we may have for our community. I want to embrace our diversity. I've lived here my entire life. I can afford to move, but I choose to stay here. I absolutely love and respect my community. I truly believe that we have the, uh, I refer to our community as the Phoenix on the Plains because we have seen more than just a development in, in Village West. We've seen an increase in housing stock. We've seen infill housing in the Argentine, Armordale area. We've seen highway and government investment in our downtown corridor. Now, that's not to say we don't have areas in need, which we all know we do. We have neighbors, neighborhoods that need connectivity and walkability. And I believe when you en enhance an infrastructure that encourages neighbors to get outside their homes and walk around to see their neighbors, and be able to have those conversations in a neighborhood, in a community they feel safe. By interacting with the neighbors, they instill the envision in leader, the vision in leaders. And I stand ready to continue to see a vision. I know I have a vision of what I would anticipate the community be. And that's one of long-term fiscal and stable revenue stream, and one of long-term viability. 
one that we call home to live, play, and work. And I'm proud to be a dot. I don't plan on leaving. Okay. JD, your your remarks. I agree that individually uh, commissioners don't don't have power there has to be a collective uh, role but I do think that we have to have ideas and uh, be willing to be flexible with those ideas um, and so what I would contend as a vision is that there's been success and we must sustain the success of Village West but now we need Village Midtown and we need Village East Village Midtown, people today tend to call Indian Springs. Indian Springs is dead, gone, it's not coming back. But we should continue the mentality of what Village West has brought to our community. And we need to spread that to Midtown and to the East. We're already going to uh, have some expansion from Village South. In Edwardsville. So the, how do you go about this? Well, we need to not only incentivize business, but we need to incentivize individuals. So we need to have a target for our budget. There should be a 20% reduction in long-term plan for 20% reduction in our property taxes. In the short term, I suggest that we lower or abate 20% of mortgages for teachers, healthcare professionals, and UG employees. This can be done, and I'm running out of time, but uh, for uh, what, what would be a cost of a third of a mil, because we do not uh, have enough, only 80% of our teachers don't live within our community. UG employees retire, they leave. And we also have trouble with recruitment. And so we have to address this. Now we'll move to closing remarks and we'll start with J.D. Rios. You have one minute. One minute. Again, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, truly, uh, I have enjoyed this campaign. And I want to say that I would really appreciate being Tom Burroughs commissioner and him to continue to be my representative. Thank you. Tom? That's a hard one to top. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'd just like to say that to my opponent, thank you for the race that we've run. It has been one that has been forthright and a one of friendship and respect. I truly believe as, as a elected official in this community, our community deserves leaders that are willing to step up, have differences, but discuss them publicly, be transparent in our positions. And I stand ready to serve this community as I have the last 21 years on the local level with the vision, the tenacity, and the success that you've all witnessed for me as a legislator. So thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. Let's give the candidates a hand.